think men don't even know to look for that. And I think it's harder to see. So they don't even know how to look for that in a woman because the things that I hear men prioritize in conversation are things that are easier to see, like fit, feminine, friendly. Like it's easier to see that versus a woman that has discernment or that is wise because that takes you one, it takes you being vulnerable with her about what's going on in your life to see if there is wisdom and discernment within that woman. But then two, if you as a man lack discernment, you're, like your spirit is not even going to resonate with a woman that has discernment either. Like You're not even going to be able to recognize her. Mm-hmm. So I think um, both of those things are true. But I think a lot of men, from what I've seen, If they are not, I think it takes a certain type of man to understand the value in that. I think society has conditioned men to believe that women are below them. And so when you start to talk about a woman having the ability to multiply or to bring out better versions of men, I think men get offended by that because it, it, I think in the, their interpretation is that she is better like she's I don't know like she's up here and she's bringing him up like nobody's saying that she's above him and bringing him up she's saying like he she's beside him and like pushing him forward like I don't I don't know or like holding his hand and like walking with him I think the visual is different the abuse um just like to the point straight to the point the last couple of months of me being his wife it became so unpredictable. Like I never knew what bag he was gonna come out of. And that was very scary for me. Um, I just remember a lot of times like, you know, somebody is not gonna make it out of the situation. Like somebody's either going to, you know, end up in jail or dead. And I don't want that to be me. So I had to make a decision and I couldn't just, you know, like come flat out and tell him my moves because I was, I'm gonna be honest, like I'm not saying he's the worst person, but I was terrified. So I didn't tell him anything, but I feel like I've made the steps that I needed to take so that I could be all right for me and my children. And like the last couple of months, very unpredictable. The fights became like more frequent. The verbal abuse became more frequent and I just knew like we were going in two different directions. It was time for me to just cut the whole situation loose. And I know that God and universe was with me because those last couple of months, like it was different. And my aunt that passed away, like she transitioned. um, Her daughter came to stay with me. And I knew right then and there, like, this is God, like, saving me. Because most abusers, they're not violent around people. They're violent when it's just you and them. So for somebody to be there with me, I didn't feel alone. Like, I wasn't scared. I feel like my throat chakras had opened up a little bit because I was, you know, speaking for myself. Like, I normally would back down, but it's like, hey, I got some help here. So I'm about to say and do where I should have done a long time ago and I can just remember sitting in the car with her like 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 breaking down and just telling her like I thank you so much because I really felt like I was just walking into my own like death trap and I thank my aunt so much I thank God so much because I don't know where that situation could have led either one of us and we both have children so yeah that was all I knew I married the wrong one. That was my list right there. Yeah. Yeah. About why won't these men help take care of their kids or why won't they come see their kids? And then that was the last straw. And I was like, let me tell you what I've learned over the years. Just put that man on child support and go live your life. Because it's a futile question. It's futile Mm -hmm. to, to ask somebody who knows who was there for the delivery, who was there when you were pregnant, to come see their kids, to come help you with them. You've kept the lines of communication open and they're not doing it. It's because they don't want to. Put that man on child support and live your life. They messaged me and they were like, you know, I'm in the same predicament. And I'm just like, listen. And then there are women who messaged me and they were like, 
I'm doing all right by myself. So I'll put him on child support when I need it. And I was like, that's how we all think, right? But life happens. We just went through a pandemic that none of us thought. And we're in a recession that nobody expected. Well, you know, people predicted it, but folks weren't listening, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of typically probably what happens after natural disasters and that that global pandemics, right? Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, now that we're in this recession, since you need your coins, you, you, need your, you need the coins you're making and you need the coins that he should be giving you rightfully. So one of my friends was like, he has a moral responsibility, moral, ethical, parental responsibility to help take care of the children that he fathered. And this is the truth. Now, I wouldn't even be, I wouldn't have even done that because for two years, I didn't put him on child support. I talked to him. I'd had the second baby. Mm -hmm. And I was, when we were two months, when I was two months pregnant, we broke up, broke up because somebody was in the street. Somebody really wasn't trying to be, you know, with me and, and, and raise his kids. We broke up. And so um, we were in that good phase of trying to, you know, communicate and co-parent. And I was being a big girl and my heart was broken and I was crying and, you know, but I'm like, you know what, this ain't for me. I can't, I can't be with somebody that's doing all this, mm -hmm. um, but I can co-parent. I can be big girl enough to co-parent, you know, mm -hmm. to have these conversations. And for a little bit, it was, it was working. Mm -hmm. And then he started, you know, not doing the distance of helping, of getting the older baby, of coming to help with the younger one, me never having a weekend off. Mm -hmm. And we lived in the same city, you know? So I, I, I went through that for three years, y'all. And I, I was like, let me go about my life. Let me go about my dreams. Let me go about my goals. Mm -hmm. So I started doing that and I relocated to Texas and the rest is history. Mm -hmm. So when you find yourself in that position, you have to really start thinking about what are the steps that I can do? And then how can I go to my happy place sooner? How can me and my kids be good? Mm -hmm. You Generalize know, I mean? it mm -hmm. and say, these men just don't want to be married. I think that softens the blow, the blow to our hearts and our, to our ego, but also too, it takes the responsibility off us to do the work and to be, and to, and, and, and to introspection mm -hmm. to really, to, to think about what is it why is it that I haven't found the one or he hasn't found me to want to be married? And so it's easier just to make a blanket statement that these men just don't want to be married. And I'm glad that to hear that, like you say, even after being in a, a long-term marriage, when you were out, you still had a desire. You could have easily said, no, that's not for me. I'm going to play the field. You know, I don't want to go through this or that, but you still had a desire to be married, but there's only one way to know if a man is willing to give as much as she's willing to give. And that's by paying attention to his actions. Is there reciprocity, you know, in this, in this relationship or in this, in, in this time of dating? Mm -hmm. And that's how you're going to know if he's willing to give, because if he's giving you his time, mm -hmm. if he's giving you his energy, if he's getting, giving you uh, his you know, um, he's comforting you, if he's there for you. And that's the only way you're going to know. And you can't, you can't disregard what you're seeing. Um, I think it's first important to understand the difference between being lonely and being alone, right? A lot of people confuse the two. Um, loneliness, I would say is an emotion. Mm -hmm. Like being alone is physical. I don't have company here. You know, with me right now, I'm alone in my house. I have my dog, Chase. Um, so that's being alone. But loneliness, I would say, is an emotion. And it's a heavy one. Like, to me, I liken it to feeling empty. Like, you feel incomplete internally. That could be for various reasons. But, you know, for the sake of what we're talking about, you feel incomplete internally as it relates to love, romantic love. You feel like that's missing, um, right? And I, I've had my moments, of course, where I felt that, you know, you can be the strongest person on earth. Um, but, you know, God created us, you know, to want companionship. It's there. There's, I've met very few people who have the gift of singleness, um, which is very rare. So when I do have my moments of feeling lonely, the first thing that I do um, as a woman of faith is I affirm myself in the spirit. You know, I ask myself two questions. Two questions. One, what does God say about me? And two, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. um, 
And those two things usually put things back into perspective for me where I can shift from being emotional to logical. Because logically what that means is that I can't settle. I, I can't, I cannot settle. I'm feeling alone and I'm feeling lonely, but it's for a good reason. Because I have to ask myself, mm, do I want temporary benefits from someone just to have company or do I want my permanent promise?